Hello and welcome to Thoughts Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak. In this video, I'm going to show you a very interesting workflow of first of all creating a 3D object from this coin image and then turn it around in 3D and animate that rotation. So we will create everything directly in Photoshop and at the end we will be able to save out our animation as a GIF file format which can be used on a website. So let's get started. First of all, I need to make a selection to be able to separate these two coins onto two separate layers and get rid of the background. I will use the magic wand, click on the white background, shift click a couple of times until I have everything selected. Then I turn this selection into a mask, but because I would like to hide what I selected, I'm going to hold down Alt while I click on the mask icon. That will invert the mask while it's going to be applied to my layer. Then I'm going to make a selection using the rectangle selection tool and I'm going to put this on a new layer. I'm just going to go to layer, new layer via cut. And then I'm going to hold down Alt, drag that mask onto this new version. And then I right click and apply the mask and also apply the mask on the other layer. So now all we need to do is to rename these layers. So that's going to be the tail and this is going to be the head of the coin. Perfect. Now we can also go to image trim to get rid of all transparent pixels in this document. And we can save this onto my desktop. I'm going to save it as coin. That's it. Now the next thing is to create a new document. So I'm going to go to file, new, and create a new document with these settings. It can be smaller, but we can always change that later when we create the final GIF animation. So I'm just going to keep a higher resolution document. And I'm going to click on OK. So now that we have this ready, we can bring in one of our images. I'm going to use the head image and drag and drop it onto this new document. Notice that I use the tabs to drag one uh, layer onto another document. I'm going to create a smaller version of this. So I'm using the free transform tool, holding down Alt and Shift, resizing it and keep it in proportions. So we have this here in the document and now we can use the 3D, new 3D extrusion from selected layer option. So that will turn this into a 3D object. And if we have the object selected and move that around, we can see that it's actually added a very deep extrusion, which we can reduce in the properties panel. So when you work with 3D objects, you should have the 3D panel and properties panel open, because these are the two most important ones that you need. So I'm just going to reduce the extrusion depth to something around this. Maybe I set it to 20. That looks good. Now what we can do is to put this object back to the center of the 3D space. So clicking on the coordinates option, I can choose reset coordinates and then move to ground. So that's now uh, facing us. It's exactly how I would like to see it. And if I have the object still selected, I can hold down shift and turn it around and see that on the other side, we have again the head material or texture, but it's flipped. So we have to fix that. But first of all, I'm going to check which material is which. Here in the 3D panel, I can turn materials on and off and be able to tell which one is the one that I need. So that one is definitely the head. So I'm just going to rename it head. Then I'm going to turn the object around, holding down shift again, and I'm going to check which one is the back. It's probably this one here, the head back inflation material. Now, if I double click on that, I can rename that tail. Okay, so we have head and tail. Let's have a look at again, the head and tail. Perfect. Now, if I select the tail, I can change the diffuse material by clicking on this little drop down here and choose edit texture. So once it's open, I will be able to replace this image here. All I need to do is to make sure I check the UV overlays. So the UV overlays is an important option. Make sure you check that to be able to see where you are going to place your layers. And then if I go back to my coin document and select the tail layer, I can drag and drop it into this material. Once again, I have to resize this just like we did it with the other one. And I'm going to try to match it to the other document. That looks good. If I turn it off, there's below the other one, which we can now delete and just keep this one, the tail uh, image. 
and just try to fill in the UV overlay as close as possible. So if I save this and go back to my uh, animation or 3D document, here I can see that it's in place, but unfortunately it's flipped still. So for that, I just need to go back to the 3D panel, choose tail, again go into diffuse and choose edit texture and make sure I flip the layer. So edit, transform, flip horizontal, save it, go back and now it's fixed. So if we have the uh, coin object selected, which we can actually call coin instead of call it head, we can again turn it around and see now it's replaced. But because we use the same texture for the head, it unfortunately changed it on both sides. And that's a very important thing to remember. So what you need to do to make sure whenever you add a new texture is to choose new texture. In case of uh, extrusion, the front and back texture will be the same. So they will be linked to each other. So in this case, I'm going to choose new texture, create a new document, and I'm going to edit that document. So edit uh, the document, or edit texture, and I have to place in the other layer. So the head, place it in, resize it, and make sure it matches. I wanted to make sure that I show this to you because uh, a lot of people run into the same problem. And if I don't mention it, then you will probably run into the same problem. So it's good to know it. So now I'm going to save this, go back. And in my coin, I should have everything perfect now. So if I turn this around, both sides look great. For the ribbing, the side, I'm going to again find the material. So that's probably this one here, the head extrusion material, which I'm going to call ribbing. And I am going to create a new texture for this as well, or we can actually use the texture we have for it because it's not affecting the front and back of the coin. So I'm going to edit the texture. And for this, first of all, I would like to create a pattern. So I'm going to make a selection, turn off UV overlay, and uh, with the rectangular selection tool, I change the style to fixed size, and I'm going to just click on my image. And then I am going to create a new layer with this selection. So uh, my layer one, I'm going to fill this in with white. So I just press command backspace because I have white as my background color. And what I need is another selection, which is going to select half of this. So I just change the width to 32 pixels and click and then align it here in my selection, something like that. And I press shift backspace to fill this in with 50% gray. Now, again, I command click on or control click on the thumbnail and save this as a pattern. So edit, define pattern and call this ribbing, save. And now we can actually fill in the whole layer with white and zoom back because now I'm going to double click on the layer and choose pattern overlay and choose the one we just saved. And I can reduce the scale to fit to the uh, coin itself. Probably something very low will be good around 20%. And if I click on OK and save this material, we can go back to our document and see it update there already. I can again move the object around. So I just select the coin and we can see how it looks. The only problem now is that we need that color from the coin. So I have to make sure that color is uh, saved. Um, I'm going to just save it with my brush tool, alt click on it and save it as a swatch. So I just click on swatch and call it ribbing. So that's the color which I'm going to use. And then I am going back to the material. And here what I need is to change the color of the layer. So by holding down old backspace, uh, if you have that color selected, you can fill in any color to a layer quickly. But now uh, my color doesn't really show because the pattern overlay is on top of it. But I, what I can do is to double click on the pattern overlay and change the blend mode to multiply. That way I will see both the ribbing and the color of my layer. So now I can save this, go back. And if I have my 3D object selected and using the move tool, I can see it looks perfect. Now the only thing left to do is to probably add a bit of um, depth to each of these sides or simulate depth by using bump maps. 
So if I select the head and click on the bump option here in the properties panel and choose the same option that we have for the head, which is called head diffuse, then it will add that depth. So let me just select my current view and I zoom a little bit closer so you can actually see what's happening there. And uh, if I show you without the bump, it looks like this. Without the bump, if I increase it, it will start adding that depth. And this depth is most visible when I start moving my object around because it will mainly affect it or it will be affected by the light source. So it will have highlights and shadows on it based on the movements of uh, the object itself or the light source. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. So the tail, I just select that. And for the bump, I use the same texture, which is in this case is called head. Even though it's the tail, it didn't follow the changes. So I'm just going to choose the same option there. And for the ribbing, again, I'm just going to rotate my object and have a look at the ribbing. And I select that and I choose bump. I can choose the head extrusion material and that will add the 3D effect also on the side. I can increase or decrease it depending what I would like to achieve. I'm going to increase it a bit on that. So the bump I used around 10 on the sides and uh, around 30 on the ribbing. So if I turn it around now, you can see how it looks. So that's great. And we can decide actually how to view this coin in a perspective view or in an orthographic view. So we can change our camera properties. When I have the current view selected, I can change these options here, perspective or orthographic. I'm going to choose orthographic because that's the best for these kind of rotations. So it won't have perspective on it at all. It's like filming something from a, the distance. And um, I just want to zoom a bit closer. So reducing the scale, I will be able to zoom a bit closer, something like that maybe a little bit further away and I can move this down a bit, something like that. Now, if I have the object selected, I ha can make sure that it's, uh, uh, we can reset it. So reset coordinates and move to ground. So everything is set up now in my document. I have my 3D object, I have my materials, I have the bump map, so I can now start creating the animation. But before we do that, let me just save this document. So I'm just going to use file save as and save it on the desktop. I'm going to call it coin animation, animation, save. Perfect. Now we can zoom a little bit further out because I'm going to need some more space for the timeline. I can just close the other document. We don't need that anymore and choose timeline and click on create video timeline. So that's what we need. And you will see that this layer has loads of attributes that we can animate. And most of them are actually the 3D uh, attributes. So from 3D scene, camera render and cross-section options, we can also animate 3D lights, materials and meshes. And even for meshes, each of the mesh elements can be animated separately if you want. But for now, what I would like to do is to have the coin animated. So I'm just going to um, scroll the here down and see the image as well. Click on the stopwatch to start the animation by adding the first keyframe. And there's a couple of limitations with 3D animation. First of all, that might be fixed later in, in uh, an update for the Creative Cloud version of Photoshop, but currently the limit is 10 seconds. So you have to make sure you fit your animation into that. And the other thing is that whenever you rotate ob objects and you want to animate that uh, rotation, you have to make sure each time you rotate between two keyframes, you shouldn't go above 180 degrees. Otherwise, Photoshop will always go in the shortest um, angle. So it might do the rotation in uh, another direction that you want to use. So what I prefer to do is uh, when I want to keep something in place, so for the first two seconds, I just move my object slightly in an angle, holding down shift, I'm going to move it slightly, really ever so slightly uh, to the left, something like that. So I'm going to turn it that way. And that automatically added a keyframe here at the bottom. Now, the next second, I would like this to rotate around and show the other side. So holding down shift, I rotate it around 
and I make sure it's not 180 degrees because otherwise then it will go the other way. So I rotate it in the correct way and now I go again two seconds ahead and I start rotating continuing the same uh, angle um, and that's saved onto uh, this cave frame. Go to the uh, next second and I rotate it back again holding down shift rotate it back and making sure that I don't go over 180 degrees. Now if I did everything properly it will turn in the same direction so it will follow the uh, rotation so let's just check this I press space to see the animation so it turns that way then it stays in place and then it will turn the same direction and if I want to loop this animation I can trim my timeline to the last keyframe and in that case if I save this out I will be able to use it as a GIF animation for example and set it to loop so if I save this and if I go to file save for web there I will be able to set up all the options I need first of all I would probably change the image size because at the moment it would take ages to load so I will probably need only around 600 pixels so with these current settings with 600 pixel I have around 7 megabytes file size for this GIF animation which again can be reduced if I save a smaller version or if I reduce the colors in here but if you want to learn more about uh, optimizing GIF files I have a whole separate video on this topic here on uh, Tats Plus. So if I want to load this animation, I just choose forever and we can check how it looks in our browser if we click on preview, which will show us the end result. So there's our nice rotating coin created from a simple image turned into a 3D object and then animated with the timeline panel in Photoshop CC. That's all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. I hope you liked it. And remember, if you want to learn more, make sure you come back and check out my other videos here on Tats Plus. Thanks a lot for your attention and see you next time.